Welcome back to Rise Entertainment 360. Now she's a rising star and clearly one of the next Afrofuturist icons. She's killing the music charts with her new song, Chop Life. Welcome singer, songwriter and public speaker, Delassi. Now, Delassi, your song has an interesting title. What does Chop Life mean to you? Yes. Um, <clears throat> well, for those who aren't familiar with the term chop life, it's a West African pigeon term, which means loosely translated, enjoy yourself, enjoy your life. So basically, that's the tone and the mood that I wanted to set for this song. Okay, and what was the inspiration for this song? Um, well, actually, you know, as a songwriter, I have a certain creative process. And typically what I do is I listen to the production first and then I just let the production lead me to whichever place, you know, my imagination will travel. And when I first heard this production um, by the very talented Anzi Beats out of Nigeria, I was transported to a place of beaches, tropical sun, water, fruity drinks. I thought to myself, you know what? This sounds like a song that you could really enjoy yourself to. And that's how I got the inspiration. I just started writing whatever came out of my, my heart from what I felt listening to that first time. Um, and that's what I came up with, so. <laughs> Okay, now talk to us about your video. You're giving off some strong Black Panther vibes in it. <laughs> yes, and you know, I love that you noticed that reference. That means that we're definitely doing something right with that production. I was actually fortunate enough to produce that video with YouTube. So I went to YouTube Studios um, in downtown New York and I created with my team what I thought was the perfect expression of an Afrofuturistic love story. And for those who don't know what Afrofuturism is, Afrofuturism is a movement that, well, it didn't start in the 90s. It actually started in the 60s with artists like Soon Ra, but it got its title in the 1990s. And basically what it means is putting black and African bodies into the future. A lot of times in pop culture, you know, we are erased and we aren't included in the conversation. So Afrofuturists are those artists who choose to place our imagery and our optics in a more futuristic, tech savvy, digital type of world. And I think when you look at this video, you definitely get that feeling from the aesthetic. So I'm very happy about that. And if you look at some of the wardrobe, you'll also see that there's a lot of Black Panther inspiration with the mud cloth South African coat that I wear. You've seen um, samples of this in the actual movie, but I purchased this, this coat you know, a long time ago. But when I saw the movie, I was so inspired that I decided that we would use some themes that people might recognize from the film to make that connection with the Afrofuturism and the movement that me and a lot of contemporary artists are trying to make for you know, a new Africa, an Africa that's seen in, in a futuristic world. I think it's an amazing video, but how would you describe your music or sound? Um, I would describe my sound as very eccentric. I think, you know, I'm embarking on a new, almost a subgenre of Afrofusion where I take my New York City sensibilities and upbringing and I mix it with all of my Ghanaian influence and, you know, West African flavor that I grew up with. And, you know, growing up as a young girl in New York City, I got the opportunity to travel to Ghana almost yearly. So my culture is a very, very big part of my music expression and who I am, but I couldn't forget that, you know, I'm a New York girl at heart as well. So I think that my music is kind of like the perfect marriage of New York sounds with an African twist, an African sensibility. And of course, with the pigeon and the chui and the gant that I infuse with the music, you definitely hear the African influence and inspiration. Okay, Delassi, now you used to be classified as hip hop, but transitioned to Afro beats. Why? 
Um, that's a very great question. I felt, you know, I got a point in my career where I felt that hip hop was just a little bit too misogynistic. I didn't feel comfortable in that space. And I felt like there was something really missing from my artistry. So back in like 2012, 13, I took a trip to Ghana. It was almost like a pilgrimage where I immersed myself in the music scene and the culture. And I was so inspired by Afrobeats that I said to myself, this is the part that's missing from my music. You know, this is the part of the expression that I'm leaving out of the conversation, my cultural heritage, which is huge. And so um, I talked to my mentor, Reggie Rockstone, and he kind of held my hand through that transition process. And he encouraged me and my creative process and just encouraged me to go for it because I was very afraid of whether I'd be received well by my community and the African community at large. But I was pleasantly surprised. I've gotten the best reception, such a warm reception and such a huge welcome into the community so I feel really good and now I'm, I'm on my fifth year and I'm really excited about it. Okay now what has been the most difficult aspect of that transition if it has been difficult? Um, well I think one of the most difficult aspects creatively was learning how to express myself at the same level of English as I can in Pidgin, Ga, and Chui. Because I don't speak Ga or Chui fluently, it has been somewhat of a challenge to be able to bring up the integrity of the language at the same level that I am speaking English. But what I love about this is it's kind of forced me to learn more Ga and more Chui, which I've been meaning to do anyway for a really long time. So I think it's, it's a difficulty, but a difficulty that I enjoy. And it's making me a, a more holistic person and a more holistic artist so I'm I'm blessed with this process even though it has its difficulties right Delassi now you are currently working with the United Nations and the World Health Organization what do you do in this position exactly briefly sorry well, right now, it's in the very early beginning stages, and we're still doing some construction for this role. But essentially what it would be is an ambassadorship that I'm embarking on to speak in indigenous nations around the world about the dangers of skin bleaching. I think that many people think that skin bleaching is simply just a cosmetic change. But what many people, especially in these indigenous communities, don't realize is that there is, you know, skin cancer that's related to um, skin bleaching. There's also kidney failure and other um, diseases, organ diseases that are related to the practice of skin bleaching. So it's much more than just a cosmetic change. It has a lot more implications. And I think that it's up to the governments of these countries to challenge these multinational corporations that push these products and, you know, sell these bleaching creams to these indigenous populations without them truly understanding the potential harm they can be causing to themselves so for myself I feel like you know being a dark-skinned woman and dealing with colorism throughout my career throughout my life and knowing how that kind of pressure can cause young women and men to want to change their skin color and involve themselves in skin bleaching I feel that I can be an advocate for that and just you know, speak to the issues and encourage these young men and women that are darkly complected that, you know, you're beautiful just how you are. And, you know, you're great, you are valid, and you shouldn't feel the pressures to change who you are because you think you want to fit into society a little bit better. It's certainly not worth it. So because this is such a serious epidemic that's affected so many lives in Africa and Asia and South America, around the world, I feel that somebody has to take on this responsibility. So I've chosen to take it on. That's amazing. Thank you so much for joining me, Delassi. Now, after the break, we'll have Gospel Great Bishop Jason Nelson. Arise 360, we'll be right back.